There are two things that make you a statue of limitations. First is mindset, and the second is a lack of activity, procrastination. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. Today, we're going to examine the very first factor in what makes person a, a person a statue of limitations, their own limitations. We're going to talk about mindset. So please join Eli and me as we discuss mindset once again because it's so critical to a person's success. You know, the sta a statute of limitations is a law passed by a legislative body in a common law system to set the maximum time after an event within which legal proceedings may be initiated. In other words, if you stole something 10 years ago, they can't arrest you for it now because the statute of limitations has said, well, too late, can't do it now. I believe with income taxes, the law is seven years. Each individual thing, murder, doesn't have any statute of limitations, but depending upon the, the crime, whatever, it has a statute of limitations. Let's talk about your personal crime. Let's talk about you limiting yourself. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about creating miracles. We're going to get a lot of help from a gentleman named Stuart Wilde. And he's someone that I've studied greatly, that I admire greatly. As a matter of fact, I take my personal meditation from Stuart Wilde. Uh, and I made a, a video about that particular meditation that I really liked. I listen to that now instead of Stuart's uh, meditation. I'll, I'll try and include that in the description box. It helps to center your mind, get you off to a good start every single day. So my question to you now is, are you a statue of limitations? It's time to say to yourself, I've spent my seven years, I'm forgiving myself, I can't be convicted of that crime anymore, and now I'm going to think like a champion. So let's get some help from Stuart Weil. You know, creating miracles in your life is not complicated when you understand universal law. In modern society, we are brought up to believe only in those things that we can logically understand. We're not taught that the universal law has limited potential or that this power is at our disposal and can be used to work miracles in our own lives. To understand miracles, we have to look at two aspects of the universal law. First, there lies deep within all of mankind an immense power, and second, that that power is impartial and unemotional. We all have within us an unlimited power. Creating miracles in our lives becomes a matter of identifying with the power, understanding its characteristics, and learning to use it effectively. We are now in an era of the rapid unfolding of universal knowledge. Fundamental structures are being swept away in an avalanche of awareness. Let me give you some examples of what we're talking about here. Now if you were to go back, let's not even go back a long period of time, let's go back a hundred years. Let's go, well, let's go back to the Civil War. If you would have spoken to a general in the Civil War, Ulysses S. Grant, or Stonewall Jackson, somebody smart, someone that was on the ball, and you would have said to them, you know, it's not going to be too, too much in the future when people are going to be flying from place to place, they're going to get into a machine, it's, it's going to take off from a city and it's going to land in another city and they're going to be able to go from New York to California or New York to Texas in like three or four hours by flying in the air. They couldn't have even conceived of that. Now somebody had to come up with the idea that like, you know what, man's going to be able to fly someday. Or the idea that you can sit in one place with a machine that looks kind of like a typewriter, type a message, and within the blink of an eye, even faster than the blink of an eye, you can send that message to the other side of the world and there'll be a person there ready to receive it. Uh, you know, during the Civil War, could anyone have conceived 
something like that. Can you conceive that in a certain time frame, we're going to be able to be like Star Trek, where you go to the to that whatever they call that room, you know, and they energize, and you go from one place, and you then you land on a on a different planet where they take your reconstruct your molecular structure, send it, boom, you're in some place else. It's going to happen instantly. You know what? I can. I think that's going to happen. Why? Because the mind of man can conceive it, believe it, and achieve it. So let's see if it does happen. Hopefully it'll happen in my lifetime. It may not. But the point is, before anything happens, you have to have that vision. And that vision is always going to be met with ridicule. Most people are locked within the limitations of their bodies and their minds. You see, logic is death to that part of you that can create a miracle. The ability to work miracles is predicated entirely on how easily and quickly you can give the collective unconscious the slip. In other words, what the status quo believes, what, what people believe, the common element, what people believe, once you can give that the slip, that is a necessary component of achievement of quote unquote a miracle. It is the connection to the collective unconscious and world belief patterns that hold us back. This attachment is the main challenge in life and your spiritual goal is to overcome this unconscious belief. In order to become partnered with the infinite mind and achieve your miracle, you have to leave these limiting thoughts and expand your mind by eliminating your preconceived boundaries. And when you're able to do that, think about this, when you're able to eliminate your preconceived boundaries, when you're able to eliminate your programming, for, I mean, we were all programmed from your, everybody has a different program. You know, people in the, these terrorists that do these suicide bombings, they're programmed. Would you even think of doing something like that? No, but they're programmed to do that. Not only that, but it's like a great deed that they're performing in their minds. We all have different programming. You have to be able to put yourself in the other person's shoes to try and understand it. That's the way that they think. But if you, you have to eliminate these preconceived boundaries. And when you do eliminate them, when you do eliminate these limitations, it's addition by subtraction in its most literal sense. Here's a direct quote from Stuart Wilde, and I quote, Miracles are not logical, so the last thing you need is logical advice from the mind. When such advice is given, acknowledge the mind, thank it, and say, I do not accept any energy that is contrary to the unlimited power that lies within me. The infinite intelligence is so magnanimous and so much more powerful than the conscious logical mind that it exists in a separate dimension. That's why the mind has such a difficult time perceiving that it's even there. Your great thinkers, your great producers, your great people that generate quote unquote miracles they have the same formula for doing it. They have a vision. They have a powerful dream. They have a magnificent obsession. They try a logical solution. They try this. That fails. They try that. That fails. They go to sleep thinking about, how can I get this done? How can I get this done? They don't think about all the things that have failed. They see the end result. And what they do is then they open up the channel to the infinite mind. And when they open up that channel to the infinite mind, the infinite mind will respond with solutions, circumstances, bits and pieces. To puzzle. It's like putting a puzzle together to help achieve that individual objective. That's how it gets done. It's been documented time after time after time. It just comes to people when you have that magnificent obsession, the things around you start to all relate to that magnificent obsession. It gives you ideas, it gives you intuition, 
and you start to see things that you've passed by a million times but couldn't put the puzzle pieces together. So let's give a quick review. The universal law is unlimited and because it is already within you, you are unlimited. The universal law is impartial and unemotional. It does not discriminate and gives you what you truly believe and what your mind can conceive. Miracles are not gifts from the infinite mind. They are a part of you because the infinite mind is a part of you also. All you need to do is to activate it. Every success has been accomplished by persistent concentration of the object in view. Just as the seed of a plant reaches down in the mineral world and is touched by the miracle of life, the universal mind reaches down into the human mind and empowers it with new and creative insights and understandings. What is required is that the proper seed be planted and nurtured and continuously nurtured in the subconscious soil of the mind. The first thing to do is to soften the soil of the conscious mind, get past the gatekeeper, get past quote unquote what people logically believe, and that enables the nutrients of the soil to operate at full strength. It opens up the channel between your mind, your subconscious mind, and the infinite mind that is a part of you that's in the same building, but you have to unlock with the key, and that key is you have to get rid of some logical thought because this is the way it works. I can't prove it. All I can say to you is when you ask the people that have achieved great things, they all tell you this is the way that it worked. You know, Eli, one of the things that I find truly amazing is that nature is so consistent because I guess planting seeds is planting seeds. Now this is from a book, Organic Gardening for Dummies. It's a book by Ann Whitman, Suzanne Dijon, and the National Gardening Association. Here's a quote from it. And think about how planting seeds in the garden and planting seeds in this garden have some congruency. The biggest mistake beginning gardeners make is using lousy or too thin soil. Inadequate belief. Before planting anything in your yard, prepare your garden beds by digging to loosen the soil and adding organic material. Slip past the conscious mind and substitute clear, concise, positive thought and belief. This prep work can save you untold disappointment and, perhaps more than any other factor, assure a bountiful and delicious harvest. That's true both in your garden outside and your garden inside. And so, these are my parenthetical thoughts to you, Eli, as a parent. Notice nature gives us these clues. The same thing that works in the garden works in this garden. And because we will never end our meeting on a philosophical note, let's go out there, create miracles, and the only way to do that is to have the right mindset. Next time we're going to talk about what prevents people by not taking action, so let's get out there and charge! I'm Eli's dad.